Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Food Origins Podcast. Today, my guest is Justin Gill. He's the founder and CEO of Bachan's Japanese Barbecue Sauce. Justin is of Japanese, Portuguese, and French and Irish descent. And Justin was born and raised in Sebastopol, California. Justin dreamed of bringing his family sauce to market since he was a kid during the holidays. Justin, his grandmother Judy, and his family would brew batches of their sauce to give out to clients of their family landscape business. Many rave reviews, requests for more, and offers to purchase always followed. Justin started working on his business back in 2013, making sure that he would keep the integrity of the sauce and making it a way to truly honor his family heritage and values. We talk about the many struggles, iterations of getting through the difficulty of bringing a consumer packaged product to market. Six years later, his childhood dream was reality in 2019. Justin created Bachan's Japanese Barbecue Sauce, which is a true representation of the sauce that his family made during the holidays for so many years. I sat down with Justin and we talked about his childhood eats, what it's like growing up being half Japanese, and many of the support and naysayers he received growing the sauce company. We go over every sauce that Bachan's currently offers, including his favorites, recipes, and what it takes to create such a great sauce company and team. I really appreciate Justin for taking the time out of his busy schedule to sit down and talk in person with me on the podcast. I've been a customer for a long time since they started and a long time user of the sauce. And this was a culmination of a few years in the making and a full circle moment, especially when I started this podcast, Justin was definitely one of the guests I wanted to have on. Thank you to the Bachans team for their continued support in my journey as well. <laughs> cool is this good yep. yeah you're okay. good cool all right we are rolling man i am here finally with justin gill he is the ceo and founder of bachan's japanese barbecue sauce we're on location up in northern california and uh, you know he's kind of been an ins- inspiration to me and others for his business tenacity and resilience uh, he's half Japanese like me, husband, father, family man. Family comes first for him. And I've been a longtime consumer and a longtime gifter of the sauce. A lot of you guys <laughs> will know. A lot of my podcast guests have had it. Obviously, I've been cooking with it for the last four years, practically. And, uh, you know, I just uh, appreciate you being here and thanks for your time. And here we are. Um, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from. Give us your ethnic background. All that good stuff, man. All right. Cool, man. I appreciate you, too, for making the drive up here. And, uh, yeah, it's fun to do some person. Got yep. to meet you, what, last week or the week before um, at our Botch on this Day party we had in Sebastopol. So it's a pleasure, man. Um, my name is Justin Gill. I'm the founder and CEO of Botchons. Um, I am half Japanese um, and I'm about a quarter Portuguese. Also, there's some French and some Irish and some English in there. So a um, bunch of different things. My mom is uh, is Japanese. And where'd you grow up? I grew up in Sebastopol, California. Yeah, so you're a local boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah been and here it, my whole life, pretty much. I mean, went to college in uh, San Luis Obispo, um, but then, you know, came right back after that and been here ever since. Awesome. You know, and then kind of what I was going to talk to you about, I know you've done some business podcasts and those of you who've who've heard him on there, you can listen to some of the the stuff that goes on for the CPG brand and everything, the consumer packed goods. But I kind of want to get into more food and let's talk a little bit about food. And then, of course, we'll be getting into all your sauces. But what was your childhood like and what was it like, uh, you know, what'd you eat growing up? Um, Yeah, I mean, I had had a great childhood um family was you know has always been a big big part of my life um you know all my family is pretty much you know most of my family's here in uh sonoma county in the sebastopol santa rosa area um yeah and food was you know has always been a big part of our lives too um you know we let me think where to start here i mean so my um on my mom's side 
a lot of our family members, uh, like my aunties and uncles and my great grandmother, um, lived in Santa Rosa, um, on kind of a communal property. And so, you know, all like, I guess you call them like the elders in our family yeah. would eat, uh, lunch together, um, and dinner every single day. And so, you know, they had a big, <clears throat> a big garden, you know, in the back where they'd like, you know, grow all the vegetables and things. And then, um, my uncle and aunties were fishermen where they, you know, they go out and fish and catch fish and then, you know, they trade things. So, um, I grew up, I guess, like around a lot of like fresh food and, and, you know, they would pickle everything and, and, you know, can it. And so, um, yeah, I grew up around that, um, type of cooking, I guess, and, and type of eating and, you know, just being around the table with family every day is something that, you know, I didn't really know. I guess how special it was till I got a little older, but it was really cool. And I think it definitely influenced me, um, you know, in, in, in my path to in, in life eventually. So, yeah. And, and, you know, up here, there's a lot of farms up here, which I think, you know, kind of helps with the produce and the vegetables and stuff that comes out. What kind of dishes like, you know, was it already kind of Japanese influence or is it all over the place? Yeah, I mean, on, on, on those meals I was speaking about, it was, it was you know, pretty much all Japanese food, um, you know, you know, sushi, um, you know, a lot of like sukiyaki made with our sauce, um, chicken, fish. Um, there was some pickled stuff that, you know, I didn't care for when I was young at all, like cocoa, like, you know, pickled daikon and stuff that like just smells. Uh, yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. Like, that's that's something that I get into is you have some dislike. So daikon, you didn't like daikon at all? No. Just so the bitter, the bitterness of Just it? The smell kind of. Oh, the know? pickled daikon. Yeah, yeah, the pickled daikon. So okay. I, I was big on smells. I still am. Um, and so, yeah, even like hard-boiled eggs, like to this day, I don't, I don't love them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have to, you know. Yeah. I get it. It does have like, it can have that funkiness. Yeah. But I do appreciate like... As I got, you know, older, you know, just a lot, um, a lot of different kinds of foods and, you know, things that, that might have like a funky smell or like, you know, cured things or pickled things or aged things. And, you know, I did, I, we just had some wine the other night that was from um, 1964 and it just like Dang. had this crazy taste, like it tastes like a, like a basement, you know, and like an old... Like mm. baseball glove just these really weird smells but it was amazing you could taste like i really appreciated like how old how aged it was how aged this wine was yeah interesting that's really cool yeah i mean i think uh, you know we'll get into some of the exposure you got too but like you know we'll get into kind of like do you have like a first impact with food i know you know your grandma of course is kind of the inspiration for you to have the sauce but did you have an impact where like oh early on i think you know i'm gonna be I want to do stuff with food or, or just a, a dish that you're like, man, this, this is, this is my childhood. Yeah, man. I mean, <clears throat> a couple of things, I guess, come to mind for that. Like, you know, when I, when I kind of realized the food that I ate, um, was different was, you know, when I started, you know, I would go to school and I bring, you know, like an onigiri or like a rice ball, um, mm -hmm with you know some nori or some salami and i bring it to school and like kids would give me a weird look and yeah you know someone would say things and uh you know i was a little embarrassed but i did i honestly didn't really didn't really care too much and i kind of kept bringing it and then eventually like you know my friends really embraced it and they loved it and when they came over to our house they'd always ask for it so that was cool that was a cool i think like formative thing for me that like sharing your culture through food, I got like positive feedback from that early on and some negative feedback, but I chose to kind of, you know, go on the positive side. And, um, and so, you know, looking forward, I guess, I think that was, um, inspirational and kind of formative for me. Um, and then, you know, I mean, I, I, <clears throat> I never really, I never thought I'd do something in, you know, in the food world. I'm, I was never like a chef. I always loved to cook. People in my family loved to cook. We loved to barbecue, of course. Um, but, you know, when we'd make our sauce growing up, that was, you know, that made an impact for sure. Like people just loved it. And so I was, I was always into like business and entrepreneurial, you know, entrepreneurship. And um, I did think about, 
you know, I'd love to kind of bring this sauce to market one day. So I, I think that was, you know, always in the back of my mind. I didn't do it for, you know, quite a while. Um, but that was, you know, that was there for sure. Yeah. 100%. And, you know, that's kind of like the origin story, which is kind of, you know, what I like to get into. And what point did it start? Like, was it, you know, um, a sauce that your, obviously your grandma came up with and it was just, was it just a shared sauce? You make it at home, everybody, you know, eats it for dinner with whatever barbecue chicken or, you know, whatever, you're, whatever you're making. And then it kind of got to the outer, cause how did it start branding out to not brand, branching out to friends all of a sudden? And then other people are like, Hey, like, is there more sauce? Like, how did that kind of, how did the, the want for it to kind of grow? Yeah. So, I mean, all my friends loved it growing up, you know, we'd, we'd barbecue at the house and, and they would, you know, people always loved it. So friends, family always loved it. Um, and we used to make it, so we'd get together, you know, during the holidays every year from when I was, ever since I can remember, we'd make a, you know, just make a big batch. We had this like big kind of metal kettle, um, and we'd chop up all the ingredients and, you know, pour the, the soy sauce, the shoyu in there and, and mix it up. And then we'd, uh, we'd bottle it up and each one of us would have like a little job. And then, um, you know, after that I would go, uh, door to door with my dad, he, we had a family landscape business. And so I would go with him and we hand out bottles. And that's when I really saw, like, I think how much people really loved it. Cause people would, you know, have their empty bottles from last year. They wanted to refill and then they would actually show up at our, at my dad's office for like a couple months every year. <laughs> they want to buy it. They want to buy the recipe. Yeah. And so I just was like, oh man, we had this like secret recipe sauce and I always thought that was really cool. Yeah. So that's kind of how it, that's how it started. And, um, you know, there's a ton of people in the community of Sebastopol. Like a lot of the people you saw there probably, you know, at our Bachelors Day party, the, you know, some of those people have been getting the sauce given to them for, for years. So a lot of people in Sebastopol, um, definitely know, knew about the sauce before we launched it. Yeah. And I even kind of, once the, uh, you know, the OG will get into how I found it, but the, once you started making the sauce, there was a lot of people that I was running into at different places up here, like, um, Trevor and his wife at K&A Takeaway by the coast. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, those guys told me that they're like, oh, yeah, we know about Justin was uh, doing tastings at the farmer's market. And that's kind of when I knew I was like, yeah, you had been building kind of this need and, you know, looking at the market and say how many, you know, the more people want it just because if you just made it for your friends, it'd be cool. But then you have like this, you start, like I was saying, you start branching out where, oh, 50 people want it, 100 people want it, 200, yeah. you know, like the whole market is like, hey, when are you coming back with that? Yeah. And that's kind of how you started testing it right yeah pretty much you know um i actually met trevor at um sonoma county meat company I, I remember that we were i was in there buying some meat um we were actually talking to those guys early on about we were you know going to make some jerky maybe and i was in there and he came in and said he had a restaurant so i gave him a bottle um and uh i don't remember if he like emailed me or something but um yeah him and yeah. his wife man they make some Awesome sa they, sausage they sandwiches. Really, yeah. You guys ever want to get over to Tamales and yeah. K&A Takeaway. But yeah, and yeah. that's kind of how it started. But I kind of get into, you know, people got to give you a ton of credit for the amount of time you took to to make this sauce. You know, from 2013, you know, I know you were doing some landscaping stuff and starting to run like other, you're trying to do some branding, right? But, yeah. And then after that, you took six years. So 2013 to 2019, Justin tested. This was his test phase. And it's 49 iterations you had. And you wanted to get it cold filled and shelf stable. Yep. And you've done your homework. Yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to, right? Yeah. And so, you know, like that's kind of, you know, what I want people to understand is that this sauce is, you know, was took a long time. It doesn't come overnight, you know, and Justin's, you know, now a national brand, but it's like growing exponentially just because of, you know, once you get it good, everybody wants it, you know? And so, you know, I 
I give you props for doing all the testing and then I just want people to know that that's, that's what it took. It wasn't like, oh, I made the sauce. I showed up to the, you know, the next day and was like, hey, you guys want to buy it? And they're like, yeah, sure, let's bottle it. And it's done. But you can kind of go into a little detail of, you know, what it took to really get the, the first one off the, off the, um, out to market. Yeah. No, thank you, man. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, like you said, it was 49 different iterations. You know, I, um, I, I studied science in school, so, you know, I knew enough about like pH meters and all those kind of things to, to, to and just doing my own research online trying to figure out how to make it cold filled because I saw that, you know, everything in the market was, was pasteurized and had a bunch of extra added water in it. And so I wanted to try to make something different and make it so it tasted, you know, just like the sauce that I grew up with, I knew people loved because when I, when I pasteurized it and added water to it and did all these things that all the co-packers told me to do, it just changed everything about the sauce. So, um, you know, I think when you're, trying to create a brand or a business, you know, or a company, I think, um, you know, taking the time, um, to put into the product development is, is ultra important. I think sometimes people try to, you know, start too fast and, you know, you can do that in like in tech and things when you can iterate quickly and, you know, but when you put an actual like product, physical product into the market, you don't have like a ton of shots with people. So it has to be good. And even if you're a really good marketer, you know, you have an amazing brand, like you can get people to buy it once, maybe twice. But, you know, what I was trying to build is a brand that was going to be here for, you know, for generations and have longevity. So um, I took the product development really seriously, it took a long time. Um, I kind of have a little bit of an obsessive personality. And so that kind of, when I just put it all into that, um, and, you know, eventually got to where I was really happy with it. And it tasted, you know, quite frankly, better than the sauce I grew up with because we, I was able to go source like really high quality ingredients. And so I, I felt like I had something special um, when we finished it up. And then, yeah, I brought it to market. And then, you know, that's where kind of the real work be began is, you know, getting it out there, learning about the industry, you know, selling, um, building a company, you know, getting a warehouse, operations, finance, like I, I did all that stuff myself in the beginning and then slowly built in a team. And, um, you know, today we have a really incredible team and uh, you can't do anything without a team. So, yeah. And, and how, you, you just a short question is how did you develop that team? You know, as it was growing and now we'll get into kind of the origins of the sauce, but how, how'd that team develop? Yeah, the team. So it started out with, um, <clears throat> you know, smalls, myself, my wife, yeah. my kids, my mom, my bachan, we're like, you know, packing everything ourselves. Family was helping out. Um, and then my, 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 my wife's parents kind of joined in to help with like the warehouse operations and things. I brought in a friend who had some kind of marketing and marketing operations experience. He, you know, was an early, um, team member of bachan's. And then, um, you know, the first person I brought in that had really, you know, had some actual CPG food experience um, was Mike Kiefer, um, who's, who's, who was our VP of sale. Today is the VP of the natural channel sales for us. But he was, uh, you know, instrumental um, in getting, you know, a lot of the early distribution that we had. I learned a lot from him about, you know, sales and in and, and the food world. Um, and then from then on, you know, just really tried to hire for, um, experience and, and cultural fit. So, you know, try to hire people that I felt had like the same values as me that were passionate about, you know, what I was trying to build, um, you know, that were just good people. And, and, uh, and that's kind of still how we do it today. We hire for, you know, culture first, um, kind of skills second. I mean, the skills are kind of got to have the skills, but the cultural fit is extremely important. And so, you know, yeah. Awesome. And getting into the sauce, so the name is obviously, um, what, if some people don't know, Bachan is a term of endearment for grandmother or granny. Yep. And named after the inspiration for the sauce and obviously the person that came up with it, Judy Yokoyama, right? Yep. Eddie, what do you call your grandmother? 
Uh, I always heard of obachan. Obachan, yeah. yeah. Some people say the it. traditional obachan, or formal yeah. obachan, yeah. yeah. And so that's kind of, yeah, it's shortened and kind of, you know, just a, a nickname, so to speak. Yeah. And so uh, that was cool too, you know. <laughs> so, um, and then, you know, I, I think she's known for her botanisms. Yeah. So there's a lot of advice that she gave you. And, you know, I liked, you know, to, to rattle off a couple of them. But, you know, one of them was obviously for you to start is you be the good one. Don't worry about them. And yep. and I understand that, you know, like a lot of times people wanted you to change the sauce when you were trying to make it. And they're like, yeah. water it down or oh, yeah. it shouldn't be this way or oh, it yeah. needs to be thicker or thinner, vice versa, right? Yeah. I mean, you know no one like really encouraged me to do this in the beginning except for my family and like you know close friends and things but everyone in the industry that i talked with was just oh no you know barbecue sauce is really really crowded category it's tough it's low velocity it's crowded and you know all all these things and so and then they would give me advice on how i should make it and you know one co-packer early on that i really wanted to work with um you know, once I figured out how to make the product, uh, the sauce cold filled and shelf stable, he, like I came to him and said, oh man, look, I, 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 I source these amazing ingredients, figured out how to make this cold filled, it's shelf stable, like this is going to be incredible. And he just kind of cut me off and he said, listen, your, you know, your ingredients don't matter. Only thing that matters is how much money you have to market this product. Mm. And um, so I kind of just, you know, took that put it as a chip on my shoulder and um, it helped kind of drive me, kind of pissed me off a little bit. And yeah. so like, you know, we have this um, tagline is something we go by in our company today. It's our ingredients matter. And so, you know, in food, I believe, you know, everything comes from the ingredients, you know, the flavor um, and, and everything. So um, yeah, I mean, you know, when you're, when you're building something new, you know, we were the, the first Japanese barbecue sauce in this country and, um, people are always going to going to doubt what you're trying to do and and tell you no and all those things and so you have to just believe you know in your vision and believe in yourself um and just keep pushing forward you know yeah awesome and the logo the octopus logo octo logo tell us about that yeah the logo man so i've you know i had a clothing line earlier on i had a few other little businesses and i always wanted to have you know a brand with a really like you know an iconic logo that was memorable and cool and people would connect with and um it's, it, it's like it's harder than it sounds and uh and so you know i've always loved you know octa octopus octopi they're super intelligent creatures they're adaptable they're all these things you need for for business um, I love the ocean also, I mean, I'm a surfer. I love to, you know, dive and all those things. And, um, so it had that connection for me as well. Um, and I actually went to, when I went on my first trip to Japan with my family, I got a tattoo from there, um, from this pretty, pretty awesome artist named Ganji. And, um, you know, he gave me this tattoo right here and it's an octopus and it has, you know, the head, the headband. And so that kind of inspired, um, our logo. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool. And let's get into the sauces. So, you know, obviously the first one we have right here, all in red and white, is the OG. And um, this is the one that started it all. And I'll just r run through the ingredients real quick. Non-GMO soy sauce, cane sugar, mirin, um, mirin seed. You got like tomato paste, ginger, green onion, rice vinegar, garlic, sea salt, um, and toasted sesame oil. And that's the one. That's it, man. That's the OG. All the ingredients, you know, that you can pronounce that you might have in your your own pantry, your own fridge. And, you know, that's how you make a sauce at home. So that's how I wanted to make, you know, a sauce that we were going to offer to people in the market. So, um, yeah. And after, I think the OG was the gluten free next. Yep. We made a gluten free. That's a that. blue bottle. It's not pictured here, but if you guys are listening, it's a, a blue and white bottle. Yep. You want to make something for, you know, the kind of underserved gluten-free market. Then you went hot and spicy. And we went hot and spicy is a pretty natural progression. I love spicy food and we want to do something a little different. You know, a lot of the Asian sauces or Japanese specifically would, um, you know, here in, in, in America would make, uh, you know, like a wasabi or something. And, you know, I, I've always loved red jalapenos. We, we grew red jalapenos every year or jalapenos in general. And, um, so we found this really amazing red jalapeno that, you know, has this like 
you know, kind of sweet, you know, hot flavor to it. And, um, sweet heat, up, sweet heat. Yeah. And ended up, uh, going with that one. So yeah, that was, that was hot and spicy. Awesome. The next one, which is my all time favorite for now until I start using the miso, which we'll get into, which is your new one is the bachans with yuzu. Yeah. Yeah. The yuzu man is it's, it's up there with my favorite too. It's, we worked on that one for a long time. That one was tough because, um, you know, yuzu juice for one, it's a really scarce ingredient. Um, and it's amazing. It's an amazing ingredient, but you know, just like all their kind of citrus, uh, juices, it kind of flashes off when you, when you cook with it. And so we couldn't get it to kind of come through and stay in the, in the sauce, especially when you cook with it. So almost gave up on it and then ended up finding, you know, someone that would make us this, uh, so a, a water-based organic yuzu extract and mm. that kind of stabilized it and, um, you know, gave us the flavor we were looking for. And so, yeah, we were super excited to like finally get that one done because I, I love yuzu. I mean, it's a it's an amazing fruit. Yeah, and, and what kind of perfect timing is, you know, we had your four-year anniversary the other day and the same day you released the new miso sauce, which is right here in purple. Tell us about the miso. Yeah, the miso, uh, that was a special one for us too. We worked on that one for quite a while as well. Um, you know, miso, it's a quintessential you know, Japanese in, in ingredient that's, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's part of Japanese culture, something that I grew up with that every Japanese person or Japanese American person grew up with. And miso soup is the total comfort food for me. Yeah. Um, and it's just this amazing ingredient. So always wanted to kind of make a sauce with it, but it was challenging because, um, you know, a bunch of different reasons, but, um, ended up, you know, figuring it out and we, we, we use, you know, a really, really high quality uh, red miso that's aged mm -hmm. for six months um, and then a white miso as well. So you kind of get like the, the mellow kind of a little more sweet flavor of the white miso and then that like true kind of funky um, deeper flavor of the red miso. And so, yeah, it worked out. We try to make all our sauces really balanced and um, you know, so I, I think we achieved that with, with that one. And yeah, I love it. We made some ribs with it this weekend um, for 4th of July. Ooh. And we made the Traeger uh, 3 two, one ribs. Mm -hmm. and, you know, instead of using like the apple juice and uh, I think Worcestershire and mustard that they, you know, recommend for the binder, I, I got some uh, yuzu ponzu. And then I, I mixed that with our miso sauce and made a nice little kind of slurry. Rub that in, you know, put some meat church seasoning on it yeah. and you know, did, did the whole three, two, one thing. Um, and then finished it with the miso and everyone says the best ribs ever made. So Damn. yeah, it's good. It's good on pork, good on salmon, good on chicken. I mean, it's just a super versatile sauce. I mean, you could really almost make a whole line of sauces with a miso base. Yeah. And I think that's something that, you know, when I started playing with it and, and, you know, I found it, 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 it it's all your sauces are that way you know, and they have their unique characteristics. But if you like the particular one, just like any other selection, you're going to start playing with it. You know, the hot and spicy, which one is your personal favorite? I mean, my favorite's always going to be the OG because it's yeah. just, it brings back memories for me, you know, and it's, uh, so, and it's just something that's very familiar that I grew up with. So, uh, you know, that won't always be my favorite, but, um, yeah, right now I guess it's a tie kind of between the yuzu and the miso uh, yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm partial to the yuzu for sure. But, I mean, the OG is what started it all, so I figured that was your answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, You know, and, and that's something that, you know, you've created too is you've created a community with the sauce. You know, I think the sauce is for anybody, you know, and, and what's cool now is that there's more versions. So, you know, there's different variety. You don't like spicy, then you can go the OG. If you want some, you know, some tang, you got some tartness, the yuzu, and then the miso, it's, it's got, I said it was depth, you know, I said it had some depth of flavor. So that, that's kind of the description I have for it. Thank you. Um, I haven't played with it yet, but I will, will be soon. And then, you know, it's kind of like uh, taking you all over the place. But before we do that, it's like, you know, is there, you just mentioned the ribs. Is there another like favorite family favorite recipe or, or food that you guys like? Hey, this is always a go-to for, you know, some of the sauces or. 
Yeah, I mean, our our family go to. I think you know, my kids would probably say the same thing. It's just marinating like a really good, you know, ribeye or a hanger steak, and then just you know grilling that up with some rice and some you know some kind of maybe pickled cucumbers or something and a salad. Um, that's something we usually eat like once a week, either that. Um, or marinated, you know, chicken thighs. So that's just yeah. something that's, it's very simple, but um, it's really good. Um, and then, you know, for me, my bachan used to make these, these, um, these chicken wings with our sauce. And there's actually a website, one of the first websites we put on the website. It's like a, a Carter Gay style chicken wing. Um, and those are really good, man. Like all my friends growing up would always want those from from my botch on and when we got a little older we go on road trips and stuff and she would make us a big you know plastic bag full of them we bring them and 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 you know people would be fighting over them so it still tastes good cold i bet too huh? oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's awesome <laughs> i think yeah this is another reason why i like justin karage you know bro you know too my brother as well you know and karage is one of the top favorites it's always seeking out the best karage around you know yeah. when, you, when you can go to a ramen place or oh, a yeah. japanese restaurant you're like oh do they have karage yeah have you been to ramen gajin in sebastopol i have yeah they have yes. a really good karage there yes i scoped out uh ramen gajin and uh we went to, we ate at kam Loi yesterday oh, oh man yeah, that place so. is good those yeah matt matt and moisha those guys were uh early supporters of bachans i used to actually sell them like some of our first bottles like out of my own little commercial kitchen that i had so they've been supporting us for a long time and you know they've helped with some of our product development too i'll, I'll walk next door because they're right next door to our office and hey what do you guys think about this and they, they actually help with the with the miso the, um, oh that's awesome yeah they're they're really good their food's salad. super good yeah yeah they're good yeah they got a good crispy fried chicken yeah yeah and i think the the one we use last what we had last night has a do they? I think they have their own chili oil, so I think that was in there. So it's pretty tasty. Yeah, they, you know, they're they're always changing the menu up, you know, too, which is cool. Bringing in seasonal stuff, local stuff. Like, yeah, they do. They do a really good job. And I've myself. So my introduction to the sauce was uh, through two people: my brother and my friend, another coworker, old coworker of mine. And they kept seeing the ads that you had rolling on Instagram, and you know, and they know, you know, me and my brother Jap have Japanese, and my mom's Japanese, so they're like, "You gotta try this sauce." And I was like, "Well, have you tried it?" And they're like, "No, we want you to try it because they know I'll cook with it." And yeah. you know, my Instagram has started changing from posting about other restaurants, and yeah. my wife was like, "You need to just do your own cooking." Nice, and so people could see what you're cooking, and then grow it from there. Yeah, and uh, and then I tried it. Uh, you know, went and got one and. And uh, I think at that time I got it online and got it sent and tried it. And I was like, wow, this is like the ch my childhood in a bottle, really. Nice, you know, and then I told you, you know, my mom would have loved it. She's not here, but that would have been awesome for her. But, you know, and then my, you know, then I told my brother, I was like, hey, it's on, dude. You need to, tr you need to get this sauce. And then we started just going to town. So, like, there's a lot of stuff with what I've cooked. You actually have, if you don't know, but there's three recipes I have on the website. Oh, on yeah. Bachans. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have um, a Arctic char yakisoba yep. that's on there. Yep. I have the hot and spicy short ribs. Okay. Yep. And then... Um, I, the third one I did a Korean fried chicken and waffles. Oh, I'm making that, man. I'm yeah. So that, what I did was I took uh, tenders instead, so they cook fat a little faster yep. and easier to eat. And then I just did like a Korean batter, fried that up, and then the you know yuzu. I think I used yuzu most likely, <laughs> and then and then just made a waffle like a mini waffle. So I yeah. got like a mini waffle oh, yeah, maker, kind of to keep yeah. the calories down. Oh, if you yeah. get those big ones, you're in trouble. Yeah. But yeah, and then I just put that together and those are, you guys loved them. And, you know, shout out to your team. Your team has always been supportive yeah. through the years. So it's That's been awesome, really cool. Man. Yeah, well, we appreciate your support too, man. I mean, it's, I know, you know, you've been supporting the brand and kind of following the brand for a long time and i mean to, to get the compliment that this reminds you of your childhood that's like that was the goal for me so that's like the highest compliment we can uh we can receive so yeah, man, you're that. welcome and it's kind of taken you all over the place and like i've seen the brand in different areas you know you're a surfer so it's gone into kind of the surfing area like and also you've gone out and done some cool stuff you know yeah. Yeah, we've done some. I mean, I've got to I've got to do some really cool things with the business, and just you know, I've tried to weave parts of um, like my lifestyle into the brand. I think like you know, 
I think one of our North stars is just to always be ourselves. And um, so, yeah, it was, you know, whenever I got a chance to go, go out and maybe film some content or something and go partner with someone cool. Like we did some stuff with, uh, with Neil Kamimura, who's a mm. amazing blacksmith out in Hawaii and went out there and got to surf with him and hang out at his ranch and attempt to forge a knife, which, uh, didn't work out for me, but he ended up putting me on like forging this little barbecue tool instead cause I couldn't dial the knife in, but, um, I'm going to go back out there soon. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've done done some surf trips, done some some spear fishing trips, and yeah, it's, it's taking me in some to some really cool. Yeah, you've really also cool yeah your spear fishing trip is actually on one of your content episodes, yeah. your originals. Yep. So that's up on YouTube. You can see that, which was really cool. And then yeah, Neil. I mean, shout out to Neil. Your knives yep. are amazing. Uh, you know, probably one of the best blacksmiths in the country at this point. Oh yeah. Um, super sought after and yeah, super supportive of the brand. You guys cook, he cooks with it all the time Yeah, he, and, and that's really cool to see. Yeah. He's a, and then, uh, you did do, I know, you, um, you guys were there, you guys had the sauce there and brand was there, was, uh, forged the table, his event with yeah. him and his wife, they came out and brought a couple other guys that were forging knives and that was really cool. So that yeah. was like another attachment to it. And I was like, Oh, there it is. Guys, you went you know, to that, right? Yeah. We were there and nice. got to see, they had a kneel. So I'm going to come see you buddy <laughs> get you on the podcast but you know and then that's you know that's kind of like what's taking you all over and I, I really you know like that about all your event taking your adventures into it as well you know because it, it easily blends in because i always tell everyone if food connects us all and oh yeah be able to sit down and have a meal together you know it really it, does man yeah it, it's awesome are there any fun facts or any things we don't know about bachans that you want everybody to know um, let me think, man. I mean, yeah, I mean, we're, 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 we're kind of put it all, we're pretty yeah. transparent. I mean, yep. there's, um, you know, one thing that we don't talk a ton about, I guess, is, you know, the, the mirin that we use in our sauce is, um, it, it's just a really high quality mirror. It's a culinary level. And, um, you know, the, um, the, the person that we get it from, he recently told us that, uh, that it's the same mirror and that this, you know, I'm not going to name the restaurant, but a top 50 restaurant mm. in the world uses okay. know, in, in the restaurant. So it made me super happy to hear, like I knew it was really good cause I tasted it and, and knew about how it was made and everything. But, um, so yeah, so that's something I'm, I'm proud of and maybe not everybody knows. Um, really cool. Yeah. Really cool. And then um, I always ask some fun questions too, but is a uh, favorite tool or gear either in the kitchen or life that everyone should know about? You're like, hey, this thing is super useful. Okay. Yeah. I got a couple. So one is awesome. definitely my, my knife from Neil um, that I, you know, yeah. saw him make and um, I love it. I use it all the time. It'll probably last, you know, forever, I'm sure. So that's definitely my favorite, you know, tool in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um that's and, a chef knife right yeah it's a chef knife yeah. yeah um and then you know this is this is a little sad i guess but I've, I, I grew up you know just barbecuing never using a um thermometer you know or anything just kind of just new you know and i don't know i don't get to grill as much and barbecue as much as i used to so i got i i've messed up a couple a couple really good steaks in the past year and so i went and got a um a meat thermometer and now I use that and it's just, it's just a nice little safety thing and I'm kind of addicted to using it now. So there's no harm in that. It's science, man. <laughs> it is. It just you comes know? out. It, it just comes out perfect every time. Medium rare, 130, baby. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. Whatever you want. So yeah. uh, that's a nice, nice little tool. Um, I'm not like super big on technology, but I do have some of the, uh, I bought some of the meter a meter made oh yeah those the bluetooth one i haven't set them up yet but i'm uh i think those are those have been good for the traeger so because it's yeah bluetooth and you can watch them while you're doing other stuff well, exactly yeah slow the, cook yeah the traeger too i mean man shout yeah. out to traeger you know i i had just like a manual smoker you know forever we get some salmon and make uh, make smoked salmon with our sauce it was really good but then i have to sit out there all day putting wood in there and it was i still don't have that time so the traeger is um is awesome and actually my you know, our, our regular grill, um, 
like one of the knobs, the gas knobs broke on it recently. And so I've been using the Traeger just to do everything. And it's actually just really good even for just chicken thighs and, and thighs things. Thighs like, are money on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just would always do different cuts of meat on there. But yeah. Yeah, just, I'm rocking a little old uh, Junior Elite okay 22 incher and it's crank it's cranking i've had it for like seven years and i've made everything on that thing nice. yeah i've even done a whole turkey in there oh wow okay. beef ribs turkey pork ribs wings thighs fish yeah, yeah. veggies smoke some mushrooms in there oh yeah some uh, cremini's in there nice yeah yeah they, they've really made i think you know smoking me barbecuing much more accessible to people and i love that man i mean there's you know, there's like this old guard way of thinking about, you know, pretty much everything in life that there's only one way to do something. And I don't know, I'm all about making things accessible. Like that's something that we try to do with our sauce is make it accessible to people. Um, you know, we want to share, you know, our culture, you know, with people. We want to bring people in and make them feel like they're included. And so, um, yeah, I think actually Traeger does a good job of that. So That's awesome. Yeah, and before we close it out, um, are there any local spots you want to shout out? I mean, we talked about a few of them already, especially the restaurants. Are there any other ones that you want to talk about before we close it out? Um, yeah, I mean, man, yeah, Ramen Gajin, those guys, you mentioned them already, but yeah. um, those guys are awesome. It's an amazing place. Um sushi uh kosho in sebastopol mm. another, another great spot um as far as like just you know local markets that were there with us from the beginning you know oliver's markets in santa rosa oliver Sonoma county uh, pacific market you know victorian farmstead as a butcher that you know bought our sauce early on um and then um yeah one of my one of my buddies, Matt Taylor, Matt Taylor Wines. He's also the winemaker for for Ink Grade in Napa. Um, you know, he helped me do a lot of the early tasting and stuff too. Taught me how to go forge mushrooms and spearfish and stuff. So, shout out to him. He's another local guy. Um, and then, yeah, everybody on my team, Team Bachans, yeah. my family here in Sonoma County. But awesome. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the floor is yours. Any advice you want to give? Promotions. It's it's all you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it. You know, advice. I think, you know, if you're if you're building, you know, a company or a brand, like I said, just, you know, believe in yourself, believe in your vision. Don't don't waver from it. Um, don't listen to all the naysayers. You know, do things for um, for the long term, and because uh, you're you're going to be successful. You're probably going to be getting it for a while. You know, nothing happens overnight. And, um, you know, if you're trying to create something, I really like the saying, um, you know, don't try to be the best, try to be the only. And so you can't always do that. But, you know, when we launched Bachan's, it was, it was the only Japanese barbecue sauce in the country. And I think that made a big difference. Um, and, uh, yeah, just try to do what you love. Be happy. Be nice people. Awesome. 100%. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Justin. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. Hey, appreciate you, yep. man. Thanks a lot. Good times. Hey, good times. I just want to say, you know, thank you for coming up, coming up here, man. Um, you came out to our party, like I said, and I don't do a lot of podcasts. I don't, you know, have a ton of extra time, but it um, feels great to, to do this with you. And, you know, you supported us. So, you know, happy to support you back. And, and uh, you're good at this, man. All yeah. This, yeah. Appreciate it. Good work. Thanks, man. Yeah. Take care, everybody. We're out. Thank you. Quick reminder, the restaurants and gear talked about on each episode can be found on my website, foodoriginspodcast.com. I appreciate your support and thanks for listening.